And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. We're here. Another week has flown by. Blah, blah, blah. Yada, yada, yada. Hada, hada, hada. Yeah. <laughs> I always say that. Where's me shillelagh? Who stole my sh Oh, here it is. Thank you, heating system, for shutting up. At oh, the it'll be on again. I know. Two more months. Because it is cold. Sub zero temperatures this weekend here in uh, northeastern New Jersey. Isn't that so? Yes, it is so, and I hate it. <laughs> I thought by getting rid of January, <laughs> we'd get out of this gall dang the crap all the cold. But Actually, no. this is the first. This is the first time I wore my my Adidas hoodie pullover for the for the show. Be careful wearing hoodies. Well, as long as I don't put the hoodie over my head. Uh. But do I look like Riff Raff to you, honestly? Uh, don't matter. Honestly, it don't matter today, man. I'm sorry. I'm ignoring our uh, our viewing audience here. Uh, we never ignore the viewers. Welcome everyone to. We are here to enlighten. There we go. Welcome everyone to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host James P. Madonna of Mega Life Twenty One, uh, and uh, I am coming to you live <laughs> and recorded, of course. Uh, and if you watch us in the future, pre-recorded. Mm. From the uh, Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey, and uh, I would like to formally introduce my illustrious co-host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? I'm sure I don't have to ask. Cold. I'm sure I don't have to ask. Um, it is the last, it is the very, very tail end, the end of the coccyx bone, which is the tailbone, don't get the wrong idea, of January 2015. A, a, a month has blown by already since New Year's Eve. How about that? Good, good, good. Because the, the, the more it blows by, the closer we get to uh, March. Closer we get to the sun too. Which is, <laughs> which is, uh, more um, light, more heat. Springtime, warmer weather, no shoveling, no chopping, you know, knock on blackthorn wood. Um, I don't know where this global, global warming is. Certainly ain't in New Jersey. Not at the moment, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's up in the ice uh, uh, places. I used to be, um, I used to be happy when St. Patrick's Day comes around because I used to be able to go for all you can eat corned beef and cabbage. But guess what? All these greedy fucking restaurants in, in our area stopped the uh, all you can eat corned beef and cabbage and uh, charged you up up the wazoo mm -hmm. for corned beef, mm -hmm. one plate, and I won't go. So what happened was, I went to a, I won't go there again, I went to a particular, last year, I went to a particular local buffet run by Asians, uh, not the new one that I love so much, uh, this one is called Bond Buffet, Chisler's Hall of Shame, I induct you Bond Buffet of Maywood, New Jersey, on Essex Street. They had corned beef and cabbage, all right, but it was the most fatty, gristly, disgusting corned beef I ever had. It wasn't brisket. Nah. Anyway. And they didn't shave it. Take the excess fat off. No, no, that wasn't the problem. I don't have, I don't have a problem with, with beef fat. Because fat is flavor and fat tenderizes. I have a problem with the gristle, those disgusting parts that you can't really yeah. Well, unless you're a wolf or a dog, you can eat it, but not me. But anyway, I digress. Um, Speaking of dogs. Dog on it? Yeah, there was a story on the news yesterday about, uh, you know, how the kids used to go to school and uh, and they didn't have their homework, and they, they, one of their big excuses was the dog ate the homework. That was well, stupid. what actually happened yesterday. That's stupid. 
It happened yesterday. The dog ate the woman's homework. What a stupid excuse. I can understand if you if you fart and it's smelly and you blame it on the dog. But to eat... And we can blame it on the cats here because they do that. To be... Once in a while. Cats fart? Yes. I never... I've never... Very seen. silently, too. Well, they do things in a very <laughs> dignified way. You yeah. Know? It would have blame you then, you know? <laughs> yeah, the cat will blame you. Uh, oh, oh, oh man. About me? I didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing like a little uh, flatulence talk to get good cheap levity. Why well, didn't hear the bells ring? Oh, right. Let me warm it up. I brought, I, I took the infamous levity bells out of mothballs, brought it back. They're actually old-fashioned jingle bells. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells, rock. Uh, wait, let's not start that. Pagan Christmas. Hey. I want to start off by saying, all right, uh, Congress, and um, in this case, of course, if it's negative, it's the Republican-controlled Congress, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now the Republican-controlled Senate. Mm -hmm. They cut food stamps by uh, 83, I'm sorry, 8, hold on. 5 billion. What did I do here? No, no, now it, no, it's 8, it's up to 8 now. They cut it again? They cut food stamps by 8 billion dollars, but at the same time, the banking industry received 83 billion dollars in subsidies. Yeah, 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 yeah. We love those but banks. But there's no money for, for poor Americans and, yeah, and we veterans. Love those banks, man. Lower middle class and vet, our veterans and our poor. Oh, there's, no, there's no money for them. What'd that Shark Tank guy say? And, and children. Don't worry about it. I don't that. watch that show. I don't watch it either. He was on another show. The woman was incredulous. Is he is he, he is he Republican? Of course. Is he like that uh, Duck Dynasty dude? What's he? Phil? Phil? Oh, Phil is misguided. All right. I I, I let him off the hook a little bit because he's misguided. He always loses. But he, needs. he always loses his razor blades, Phil. His, his shaving device. Well, anyway, besides that, the man is misguided as far as Christianity is concerned. Very that's, much so. That's my take. Okay. That's you know. Take. um... Dr. Bill, on that note, what I just read, Republicans have a tendency, and I know Chris Christie did it years ago, but they, they usually have a tendency um, to tell us that we need to make sacrifices, but they are never willing to set the example for making sacrifices. No. Not at not the least bit do they make sacrifices no. in, in Capitol Hill. <clears throat> no. What's mine is mine. And what's yours I want. Yeah, you got it. What's yours I want to be mine. And what's mine is mine. And if you're destitute, you gotta make Talk more noogies. You gotta make more sacrifices. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. not us. It's like do as I say, not as I do. Once I become an elite pal, hey, it's all mine. It's like uh, 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 Jimmy Swaggart that used to cry and say, Lust is so sinful, lust in the heart. Meanwhile, he was picking up prostitutes on the highway. <laughs> he was trying to, he was trying to uh, 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 convert them. That's what he was trying to do. With his penis? Well, uh, the, the Roman <laughs> Catholic Church used to uh, convert by the sword. So I guess he converts by the penis. Right. And also, uh, many priests used to try to convert the altar boys by the penis, too. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, Jimmy Swagger got caught more than once. Well, this is typical. Hypocrisy should be uh, a big Las Vegas Strip neon sign with Republicans. Yeah. Because they are the ultimate in hypocrites. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And uh, on, on that note, I have one more thing to talk about with you, and I know you are just as pissed off as I am, and that is uh, Senator John McCain of Arizona calling uh, uh, war protesters a low-life scum. Yes, he did. Well, yesterday. Let, me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, John McCain. If you 
have in the past or are now making any money, even if it's a dime or a nickel, in war profiteering or have anything to do with like a Halliburton, then you, jo Senator John McCain, are the low-life scum. Take it away, Dr. Bill. Yeah, well, the, the low-life scum of John McCain, what he did yesterday was he protected Henry Kissinger, Henry, who is a war criminal. Henry Kissinger is definitely no angel or hero to the United States. He's a war criminal. American people, right. And that's what Code Pink was saying. Arrest Kissinger for war crimes. Bingo. Now, Senator John McCain can be a warmonger and a piece of crap and everything else, but he defended Henry Kissinger. Which and means therein lies a problem. Which means that John McCain is not the quote unquote nice guy Republican that people may think he is. You know, they're making him out to be a Barry Goldwater or something. Yeah, well, they did that when he ran for president. And Barry PR. Goldwater was. He wasn't all that bad, like Richard Nixon, right? Barry Goldwater really wasn't all that bad. Um, Not as good as Eisenhower, but he, he he was a good egg in some ways. His, his big statement, though, you can see it in places like uh, radical Islam, etc. He was saying that uh, um, uh, extreme, ex ex being extreme in the case of liberty is not a is not a not a virtue. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Wasn't on that order. Isn't there a, f a famous photo op of John McCain posing with ISIS? That's correct. Because ISIS was created by the United States of America, just like the Mujahideen, which became Bin Laden's organization. Do you think? Um, do you think the United States might have uh, decided not to save those three Americans that were beheaded? To the not United to not States to not to send in SEAL Team Six. The United States has a policy it will not give ransom for terrorists. Then they'll chop their heads off. Okay? But sending in SEAL Team 6 and this, that, and the other thing, the big problem with that stuff is there's not enough intelligence on the ground. So they did not try wholeheartedly to save those men. Now, what are you talking about? Are you talking about the Japanese? No, I'm talking about the three Americans. Foley and the other... Uh, yeah. oh, okay. Well, Foley's parents wanted to get the money, but the government said, said you no. can't, it's illegal. Well, then they lost their son. And you'll go to jail. Very... I don't even want to get into it, because I saw one of the videos. But anyway, I mean the real video. Well, that's because in war, individualism goes down the drain. You are nothing. What did Henry Kissinger say? Uh, to David Frost. Yeah, well, what do you say? We yeah. have America, Americans, soldiers. America has a lot less friends than we think we have. No, about the American soldiers are stupid and uh, something else. Oh, really? He said that? Yes, he said that. Well, they're, they're, stu they're like pawns. They're, stu used, they're stupid you know. to believe the lies from their uh, recruiters and enlist. I, 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 was, I was talking to a recruiter when I was 17, and uh, I caught him in lies. I found out he was lying to me because I believe in getting the second and third opinion. You know, I was a little researcher uh, back then. I was I was well read, uh, and 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 yeah, he lied to me. But hey, you know, uh, if I had a son, I'd say, don't you dare enlist. He may have to register for this for the stupid draft, but there is no draft. It's volunteer army. Oh, okay. But well, why why does why do when people apply for social services and uh, when I went to tech school twice, how come they asked me if I was registered for the draft? Selective services. They asked that was at one time, but not now. I told them at my age, what are you and with my knowledge, are you out of your mind? And she the, the woman laughed. I says, Are you out of your mind? You want me to bend your ears and tell you all about 
what's really going on in America? Or do you have the time to listen to me? She goes, no, 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 I don't have the time. But well, then, don't, then next question. <laughs> next question. But anyway, uh, yeah, she was asking the wrong person. So, um, yeah, what was I saying? So, yeah, so, um, oh, by the way, were, were, was one of the Japanese uh, killed? Or not yet? Uh, we don't know, as far as I know. We don't know. Ja Japan won't bargain because with there's still either, right? The deadline passed on the negotiations, but I presume they're still negotiating. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, uh, John McCain. Um, yeah. Unbelievable. You know, our Republicans' true colors always eventually come out. Well, not even a Republican. This man supposedly was tortured in Vietnam and etc. and should understand these things. You know, yes. like FDR. FDR. Yeah. Yes. If FDR was not crippled by polio, believe me, he would not have understood the things that he did to try to help this country and the people in it. The plight of the little guy, the plight right. of the poor, right. the plight of the unfortunate in America. He right. would not have the empathy and compassion if he was not crippled by polio. That's correct, because he was a rich man. He was born rich. So FDR could have, uh, because it, it, this environment was different, could have been a totally different That's president. That's correct. He might have been another eh, moderate corporatist Democrat. That's correct. Like the Clintons. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. You know, uh, I'm not even going to waste my time talking about Sarah Palin. I think she is a... Um, She's there for entertainment purposes only, but Democrats are... there are certain people who do not take her for just entertainment. <laughs> Democrats are praying that she runs because this will be so much material for uh, uh, Rachel Maddow, Ed Schultz, all comedians in the, in the world. This will be s an endless supply of material. Believe me, there will be a lot of material with the ones that will run. Plenty. Plenty. Especially if Mitt Romney uh, decides. He's gone. He's out. He ain't running. Now you have some uh, holy Field rollers. Is clear for Jeb Bush and Christie of uh, New Jersey. You have, uh, I think there's a contest between uh, 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 Huckabee and Ted Cruz as far as who has the real bat phone to God. Hey. Was it Mike Huckabee or Fuckabee? Huckabee, right? Huckabee, but yeah. he's, he's an idiot too. From Arkansas. Is he not? Yeah, neither of them don't know the real God. He's saying, uh, uh, well, he definitely believes, like that other jerk from, where the hell is he? This Republican wants to make it a federal law to, to make gay marriage illegal yeah. across the board. Yeah. And people, atheists, he, he doesn't want to he does not want to marry atheists. But I suppose he has a bat phone to God, too. Yeah, he thinks he does. They all have bat phones to God, all these Republican uh, zealots. So did George W. Bush when the, the, uh, God told him to go into Iraq. Wasn't God that he was speaking uh, to. Uh, uh, uh. It was the other guy. Yeah. Hey, go into Iraq there and, uh, you know, get 4,000 people killed and a million displaced Iraqis and and uh, 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 allow ISIS and uh, every, oh come on Didn't hey I was talking to Ken Create about that about these lying hypocritical Republicans he says oh who am I and who are we to judge I says Ken if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it sounds like a duck it's a duck yeah. you know you ever hear of the proof is in the pudding did he ever hear of criticism as a teaching tool? Uh, yeah. Well, then why would he say something like that? It's not a matter of judgment. It's a matter of criticism. If somebody professes to be closer to God than you, uh, if they profess to be a Christian and they do, everything they do is, is against the God of the Bible, is right. unbiblical, that doesn't make them a Christian, does it? And it allows you to criticize, doesn't yes. it? Yes, yes. Thank you. If you catch them in a lie, and, and they're spouting nonsense, 
uh, uh, like uh, there's a part of the Bible that tells people to be kind to to foreigners and and respect them and and you know and, that, uh, ancient Israel was told to treat them as they would their brothers among them the sojourners among there you go and of course to help and give to the poor that too but I'm just saying but these so-called zealot right-wing uh, cultists I don't even want to call them Christians their Bible is their own Bible they totally rewritten it for, for their wow. selfish power hungry agenda so I think I think they're greed I think what they really want is power and control I don't think it's so much That's right. money stuff in their pockets dollars and cents I think it's power and control they have this obsession they're control freaks, like just like a uh, uh, my friend. They want to call you, control you in the bedroom. Yeah, just like uh, a relative of mine and a friend of mine, their ex-wives were known as control freaks. They wouldn't let them have friends. They they don't they they do they 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 told them to give up their hobbies. They told them uh, they basically told them, hey, let me put a leash on you. You know and you do what I say you know it's like I know it's a psychological disorder it has to be of course all abusers that's one of the first things they do is prevent you from having friends they don't even they don't even want you to have really be close to your family either. that's correct absolutely they want to control your every movement and you know guess what, I, what? You know what I say? You offer no consent. Shillelagh to the skull. You know what I mean? I have no problem with safe, sane, and consensual. Safe, sane, and consensual. But there's no consent involved there. I heard Frank Costanza say something like that. Costanza? Can't stand you. Uh, no, on Seinfeld. Oh, when he was having sex with uh, Estelle and, and he told George, and George says, I don't want to hear this. And he said, oh, it's safe. Consensual. Mm. Anyway, let us now, because I can't think of anything else. Because I don't want to oh, go. Oh, there's plenty of else. I don't want to go on and on about, you know, about Sarah Palin because she's just nailing Palin. That's all. <laughs> you betcha. You betcha. All right, let's sink our teeth into these readings. She missed her. You betcha. She missed her real. Uh, Calling in life? Calling in life. She should have been a porn star. Milf That's porn. It. That's it. Well, she might have got in there earlier. You know what? She was pretty hot when she won that that, that beauty yeah, contest yeah, in, there you in, go. in Alaska. There you go. She can uh, Did she say she can dress a moose when she was uh, one that when she was in the beauty contest? Well, she was that young? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she can un <laughs> undress a moose in the bedroom. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> The State Assembly of New Jersey oh, God. failed on Thursday to override Governor Christie's veto of a so-called heat and eat bill that would have provided increased benefits to food stamp recipients rather than cuts. So in other words, the Democrats in Trenton failed turned their back on the poor of New Jersey. You should be a, no wonder they screwed Barbara Bono over and re-elected Chris Christie. Bunch of corrupt bastards in the state. I hate them. The assembly needed a two-thirds majority, that is 54 votes, to override the veto Christie issued in September. The bill had 60 votes when the assembly passed in June but got only 43 votes on Thursday. The failure extends a five-year streak in which the legislature has yet to override a Christie veto. The failure sandwiched between a snowstorm and a forecasted weekend cold snap 
frustrated the Democratic sponsors who feel the bill is a sensible solution to helping low-income families stay warm and fed in the winter. Yeah, and food stamps is called SNAP, the abbreviation. And why, uh, since they feel this way, or what caused them to fail? I, well, I just read that. Okay. When the bill was first came out, it had 60 votes. On Thursday, it only had 43. Yeah. Okay. I don't understand. I'm scratching my head said one of the sponsors, Camden County Democrat Gabriela Mosquero, or Mosquera. The measure in the legislature followed a federal farm bill signed by President Obama last year, allowing eligible households in the SNAP program, who get a minimum annual energy assistance payment of $20, Oh, gee, don't spend it all in one place. To qualify for an additional utility allowance. The state's bill would have provided about 160,000 eligible households with $21 to qualify for extra assistance. But without that increased payment, the Obama bill cut food stamp assistance by up to $90 a month. The Office of Legislative Services agreed with an estimate that raising the energy assistance payments from $1 to $21 would cost $3 million to $7 million. But that money could probably come from unspent federal funds from the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program instead of from the state. In his veto message, Christie said he was worried that the bill violated federal law. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services concerned that many food stamp recipients were using the energy assistance program without having a real need for it. They have no need to keep warm. It, it issued a stronger guidance on requirements that Christie said the bill did not address. An opinion from Senator Bob Menendez's office found that the bill does not violate federal law. The vote to override the veto comes a week after Christie, a presidential hopeful, was in Iowa calling on conservatives to embrace the middle class and working poor. Oh, really? Sounds good when they're campaigning, right? Yes, they. that's what they're all doing that's now. That's Joni Ernst country. Cunt. Uh, Rand Paul, uh, Ted Cruz, they're all doing that now. We're for the poor and middle class. Because they want to get elected. Exactly. And then when they get elected, they do what the hell they want. They say, okay, we're in for four, four more years, screw you. Because they don't believe in a democracy, they believe in a republic where you vote for me and I'll do the best for you, pal. It will be my opinion and not yours. Well, they do the best what for I consider They do the, the best, best for the for the for the for the rich. That's correct. Not for the people. That's what they consider. Well, the best. That, that's why it's so important for the for all Americans to make it their business to vote. All uh, Americans. Until the system is changed if you want something done properly and etc you need to vote for the crumb party you know what okay. i like that i like that the crumb party crumb party you know what we're going to use that for a while right. the crumb party yeah. because there we know the democrats are corporatists also mm -hmm. but you get a few crumbs yeah. yeah as opposed to absolutely nothing from the republicans correct so they are the crumb party the vote to override the veto comes a week after Christie. Oh, I read that already. His office did not respond for comment. In his veto message, he said 
he will remain steadfast in my support for assistance programs to help aid needy individuals and families. Oh, uh, but not this particular one, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh boy. Oh my God. Okay? This is all I got to say. All right, moving along. All right, now. I'm going to get to Mr. McCain. Oh, you got a McCain article. I got one here. Yeah, that's it. Senate Arm, Armed Services Committee Chairman John McCain kicked protesters out of a committee hearing on Thursday, calling them low-life scum. As they hollered for the arrest of one of the witnesses, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. Mm -hmm. Shortly after Kissinger, 91, took a seat at the witness table, several protesters from the anti-war group Code Pink approached from behind waving signs and a pair of handcuffs chanting, Arrest Henry Kissinger for war crimes! McCain says, You know, you're going to have to shut up, or I'm going to have you arrested. Arrested for expressing an opinion that, 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 they, that they don't like. Under his controlled meeting, yes. Mm hmm. Calling for the U.S. The U.S. Capitol Police to remove them. As officers escorted the protesters out of the hearing room, the six-term Arizona Republican, a decorated Vietnam veteran, six terms, and a former prisoner of war growled, Get out of here, you low-life scum! And he should know better, like you said before. U.S. Capitol Police spokesman, spokeswoman, Lieutenant Kimberly Schneider, said, Three people were removed from the room, but no arrests were made. The upheaval came Thursday during a committee hearing that also featured testimony from former Secretaries of State Madeleine Albright and George P. Schultz, who were sitting at the witness table with Henry Kissinger. So in other words, only at town hall meeting setups are you allowed to debate the politician. Unless it's Chris Christie, then he just well, even then they throws you out. Huh? Even then they shut you down. If you're a Republican. Sounds very fascist to me. The Code Pink protesters routinely interrupt congressional hearings and are ushered out by police. But Thursday's incident was different, McCain said because the protesters came within inches of Kissinger and waved what appeared to be metal handcuffs near his head. At one point, a protester alleged that from 1969 to 1973, mm -hmm. Kissinger, who was National Security Advisor to President Richard Nixon, before being named Secretary of State, oversaw the deaths of millions of people in Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. The protesters said many thousands more people died from the effects of the defoliant Agent Orange, uh -huh. or from unexploded United States ord ordinance littering the countryside. Yeah, Agent Orange uh, in that situation was a defo defoliator. Right? Defo to defo hey, the United States, I assume, knew it was losing the war. They should have just pulled out years beforehand. Could have never got in. 
Uh, yeah, well, the French got their ass kicked there. The British Remember, didn't want it. Remember uh, 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 weapons of mass destruction in, in, in Iraq? Yeah, supposedly. Well, yeah. in Vietnam, it was the domino system. Oh, if we let one country fall to those commies, then these other ones will fall like dominoes. These damn dark commies. Well, they ended up being damn dark commies. They ordered the uh, Laos, right? Cambodia? Vietnam, like my grandfather used to say, Vietnam. They all, well, they're all Salmon communists, North right? Vietnam, I don't know if they're communists. I mean, Thailand, uh, yeah. well, Thailand's the, not communist, that's a king. I, no, 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 no. I'm saying Laos and Cambodia. I don't know. Well, the, well Cambodia, the Khmer Rouge came in. They were communists. I don't know about Laos. I don't know what they are today. Yeah, La Laos is like, um, like a mountainous. Country. No, no. During his testimony, Kissinger cautioned against, <coughs> excuse me, deeper United States military engagement in the Middle East and Ukraine without a better understanding of the potential consequences. While the most immediate challenge is to defeat Islamic State fighters in Iraq, and Syria, Kissinger said, we must not let that degenerate into another war that we don't know how to end. He also declined to endorse McCain's call for providing weapons to Ukraine's military as it battles Russian-backed separatists. I'm uneasy about the beginning a process of military engagement without knowing where it will lead us and what we'll do to sustain it, Kissinger said. Of course, he didn't think like that about Vietnam, did he? No. Thank you. Nope. Thank you for pointing out that the Republicans' war on women continues. Oh, of course. Even in the new Congress, despite their Democratic denials in recent elections, all one has to do is look at how the party votes on women's issues. Most Republicans voted against the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. And uh, my congressman here in New Jersey, Scott Garrett. Oh, hey, yeah, the, the other douchebag that got reelected. Nice, nice job, New Jerseyans. Nice job. Even voted against the Violence Against Women Act. Oh, boy. With the rich uh, getting richer. And many middle class families getting squeezed in today's economy. Why do Republicans feel that women's issues are the first they should vote on? No, I thought, I thought uh, when, you, when you mentioned violence against women, I thought violence against anyone is assault. Yeah. Assault and battery. So why, women unless don't count? The congressman, yeah, unless the congressman are, are doing it. Is huh? doing it. Unless the congress is doing it. Yeah, I mean, women are people too. They're citizens. You know, not I mean, not as much uh, people as corporations. Huh? Not as much people as corporations. Well, you're talking about our the rigged system we have. It rigged it. That's correct. That corporations I'm being, have. I'm being satirical. I know, because corporations are 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 paying their campaigns. They're, 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 they 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 bought and they purchased. The they politicians are, in Washington. They are married to the government, which means fascism. Yeah. Thank you. A lot of stupid redneck uh, uh, teabaggers do not know the definitions, the political definitions at all. That's correct. They don't know uh, a, a socialist from a communist, from a, from a fascist, from... They don't know anything. They, they lump them Bingo. all together. They lump them all together. I recently saw the movie Selma, and I was impressed with the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. when he pointed out the only way 
to change things was by voting. I was impressed by Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Everything they said was the truth. I was glad to see a letter to the editor, House Bill Aims to Hurt Women, denouncing those men and women who do not vote. Nothing will change for women until we hold politicians accountable on election day. Okay. All right. Um, just want to say greetings, give greetings, say hello to my near, my near dear friend from Osaka, Japan, Miho. Greetings, Miho. Also greetings to uh, personal trainer extraordinaire and former WWE star, uh, professional wrestler and trainer, Mr. Ken Thiessen. Greetings, Ken Thiessen. Greetings to my great administrators, uh, uh, Jolton Joe Stebbins and Sash uh, Boyle. Greetings to the both of you. Uh, my other administrator of uh, Everything is Food, Mr. Anthony Laura, I send my greetings. Rick Brown and Eric Doyle of uh, Unconventional Asylum in Southern California, greetings. Greetings to you. And uh, the new award winner on my uh, fitness group, uh, the Mace Master himself, Joe uh, Margiarelli, I send greetings. Um, Uh, eh, 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 that's about it. Uh, as far as my greetings go. All right. I forget his first his, his first name and last name. Where's is this new? Fresh? Yes. Oh, okay. Do you know the wrestler of Mankind? Yes, uh, Mick Foley. Okay, Mick Foley. Well, he was in a eat a wing. Eat a wings contest. Oh, I would love that. Oh, hot wings? Buffalo hot wings? Oh, I love those and things. And he cheated. Well, he put him in a fanny pack. It's pro wrestling. Okay. Why the fuck did he do that? Well, he's an idiot, obviously. Oh, you mean with the sauce and everything? I don't know if it had sauce. But well, he was also Cactus Jack and uh, uh, Dude Love. And uh, he, he, he had alter egos. He had different, you know... Uh, well, the winner of the wing contest, I believe, had 63 or 64, and he ate. It looks like he sneaked some of them into his fanny pack. Yes. Oh. He laughed about it later. But he got caught. Yeah, he got caught. Last year, some woman, I think she had 50-some or something. She, she was the winner last year. Yeah, but Mick Foley looks like he can put away a lot of uh, buffalo wings. What's wrong with him? Because he's a cheat. You know what's good about... The um, the chicken wing contest. You know, there's no bread involved because when you're yeah, in like a hot dog. when you're in a contest like the hot dog eating contest, you have to eat the damn white bun. You have to eat the bread, and if you go that place in um, Amarillo, Texas, called the Big Texan, you have you have to eat the 70, 72 ounce steak. Not the, just the steak. You got to eat the steak dinner. Which means the the rolls and or and the, the French fry. That to me that's unfair, you know, as far as the restaurant's concerned. But anyway, if you finish it, it's the meal is free. But it's not the steak that gets you; it's the carbs. It's the sides, maybe. Sides. You gotta eat all the sides. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, in like the, the hot dog eating contest. The bread and the water that they drink. This expands your stomach uh, unfairly. You're not even getting the hot dog. Yeah, it blows you up. You could you could eat more, but then they'd be too dry. It would the, the bread wouldn't go down. I, I don't like to eat hot dogs from any supermarket period because it's garbage. It's like it's almost as bad as the pink slime that Jamie Oliver shows. You know, it's 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 it's, po yeah, it's poison. Now, if you're talking about freshly made frankfurters from a German or Polish pork store, freshly made, that's a whole different ball game. Or if you're talking about a kosher hot dog, kosher frankfurters, 
you know, like Hebrew National or whatever, you're talking about a high quality damn hot dog, and I would eat that with no problem, but as far as the white bread goes, that's just going to bloat you. Yeah. By the way, the Hebrew National's cooked salami is very tasty. You can tell the quality of the meat. Well, yeah, I guess so, but they, they, they got to make... Once these companies, <coughs> excuse me, become so big, put out so much product, they tend to decline in quality. You That's mean, what I'm afraid you of. You mean like your Oscar Myers and your ballpark, uh, your ballpark you Franks? There you go. Yeah. My, my brother tells me uh, a few, several years ago, hey, look at the hot dogs I got for the grill. It's called, the company's called Best. They must be the best. I says, Scott, just because they're called Best, that doesn't mean they're the best. That's pay PR, baby. PR. Holy crap. <laughs> That's like if I ran for uh, a public office and I changed my last name from Madonna to Best. Or Winner. James Winner. James Does Winner. that mean I'm the winner? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, people have this tendency. Got to love it, relatives. Eh? Let's say, yeah. let's say um, uh, somebody wins the uh, lottery at a particular uh, place. Yeah. 7-Eleven uh, or whatever, right? A lot of people then go there to buy from that 7-Eleven. That 7-Eleven may never, never have a winner for the next 800 years. Let me tell you something, brother. If I if I won big on any lottery, I'm not handing my ticket over to some 7-Eleven owner or manager. I'm driving right to Trenton, New Jersey. You have to. I'm I'm bone. I want to claim my prize guaranteed. No, you get if you get the form that you must fill out. Then you and fill you it out. And you have a copy of your thing. When you hand it in, supposedly. Be very careful. You know? Be very careful. Don't jump up and down. Don't let other people see you got a winning ticket. You can get mugged. Well, the new uh, the new scratch off in New Jersey no, the is ghost, now worth five million. The go scratch your ass scratch off. Yeah. Five? What do you mean? Five million? You, you in other words, that's it, what you win. If you win, you get five million. Yeah. I like the uh, the win for life where you get a thousand a week for life or more. I like the win for life. Publisher Scurrying House is having it right now, five thousand a week for uh, life. Oh, no, they just they just want you to subscribe to magazines. I'm talking about the state lottery, the win for life. They have the one state. like that. Damn right, they got several. Okay. The state lottery's got several win oh, for lives. Right now, or maybe on Friday, I believe the. Uh, Either the Powerball or the uh, Mega Million Mega was millions. 289 million dollars, and if you take the lump sum, it'd be like something like 180 some million dollars. When you take the lump sum, you you pay, you pay all that rest in tax. Tax, and that's it. You 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 you're, you already pay the government, and then you just take the lump sum. Right. I, I, yeah, I would rather do that because who the hell knows? Well, how yeah, if you're an older person, you got to do that. How long is it? How, hey, you could be middle age. Yeah. You don't know how long you're going to live. Exactly. So take the lump sum. A lot of people are doing that. And live off the interest. Put it in there. Don't put it in Bank of America. What kind put, of interest do you get today? No, put it, uh, go to like a, 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 a federal credit union or a savings and loan and put it in a... Um, you know what? Exactly. There's you nothing to invest in today. Put it. Go to a no-load mutual fund and put it in a triple tax-free money market fund, where your interest is tax-free, and live off the interest. Right now, banks are paying less than one percent interest. CDs are like maybe one or two. But they're but they're investing your money, and making mo and making a fortune. What is happening is the right? banks don't need your money. They're getting free money from the Fed, and therefore they don't need to pay. See, a bank goes into business, you put your money in the bank, and they use your money to make their money. But they don't need it today. They don't need you today. So they're not paying no interest. Uh, so therefore, what, you, what do you do with your money? So what you're saying is Spend it. when a... a um, when an organization that is a profit-making organization is really nice to you, that means they, they need something from you. Of course. 
It's like when, I, when a beautiful young chick walks up to you with a big smile, mm -hmm. she wants something. She wants something. And, and, and you mean she, to tell me she doesn't want to unless you're rich give and, you something? No, unless you're rich and famous, uh, she, she wants something, you know, monetarily from you. Mm, I didn't... Uh, yeah, it's called uh, being played. Uh, it's called the oppor an opportunistic person who, is, who plays other people. Well, I've never been that cynical, but I have been called gullible in the past. You mean a sucker for a pretty face? No, I had my I had the lumps on my head r r r read by a phrenologist, ah. and she said I was gullible. I am so. a constructive uh, a cynic. There you go. A pessimist. A constructive pessimist um, has a uh, uh, like uh, the Star Trek Enterprise had the force field for protection. You put up a, a force field around you. Yeah, man. Every gall dang episode, uh, once another ship shot at them. The, the, the field. Uh, uh, half of the half of the shield is down, Captain. What the hell? It's always down. Yeah. Well, if it didn't go down, and if and if they if if there wasn't any mechanical problems with the ship, then Scotty wouldn't have any role in the in the series. You would never hear Scotty's voice. I cannot give you more power, Captain. <laughs> Scotty would have, he, he would be like Captain Dunzel. He would have no useful purpose. <laughs> yeah, but the point of it is, the point of the Galdang force field is to protect you against <laughs> the other ship's, you know, weapons. Yeah. And as soon as another ship fires at him, half the shield is down, Captain. Half the shield is down, Captain. <laughs> Listen. Damage on the deck five. There is a a purpose for pessimism and uh, cynicism which is probably synonymous what do you think maybe hmm. whatever well uh, you, of course there's a role for it because uh, otherwise you would be a fool you know you, now, you have to be right. you have to be uh, step back at certain things now and the, examine them. the uh, ultra liberal Pollyanna on oh. the other hand uh, the Barney the dinosaur people I love you you love me they uh, they don't want to hear anything, no discouraging word about anything. They are into this thing about um, uh, being kind to people, being kind to everything, and everything. Even they, they, even well, they haven't they don't they haven't lived in the world long enough to understand that you do not like I seen this idiot the other day, but. Uh, I guess he he was putting his head in a bear's mouth. Oh, that I I that video. You mean the grizzly? The grizzly, yeah. And the grizzly was playing with him. He was on top of a thousand pound grizzly. Yeah. He's making nice nice with his. He's a trainer of bears. Whatever. And the guy's head just fit like a grapefruit in this grizzly's mouth. You see what happened to Watcher McCullough? What was that tie? That lion tamer that tried. You Siegfried know? and Roy. Siegfried and Roy. That was a yeah. tiger. That uh, tiger, yeah, but the whatever. tiger did not attack him. The tiger tried to carry him like a, like it, it carries its cubs. You know yeah. when they pick up the cub by the yeah. the skin on the back and it stretches. Well, Siegfried or Roy, whoever it was, his skin doesn't stretch like a tiger cub. Yeah. Well, the point I'm trying to yeah. make is they're always wild. You know? Of course. Hey, the ferrets that chewed the, the baby's face off. It's a known fact. You don't have ferrets when you have infants. And, 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 and it's another known fact that ferrets are not 100% domesticated animals. And the same thing goes for these hybrid, uh, you know, wolf with a, you know, with a, with a, with a, with a dog mix and the, uh, the, the cat that's partially wild. You know, or who has an ocelot for a pet, you know, which is a wild Amazon jungle cat and all this crap. You know, there was a video. Ah, hey, you motherfucker. They don't curse my furnace. <laughs> there was a video up on uh, Facebook last night of these, uh, it looked like, uh, it looked like a water buffalo. Yeah. And there was either a cheetah or some kind of spotted cat. At its 
jaws into the ass of the water buffalo. The hind quarters. Yeah. Hind quarters, hanging on, trying to bring it down so it could start eating it. And the water buffalo is walking with this cat still on it, you know, and everything. All of a sudden, two other water buffalo come. It looked like a female because I didn't see horns. Yeah. I don't know. Does the female have horns too? That's a good question. Or well, whatever. I think they all do, but. But anyway, these two had horns. And they came to the rescue of that water buffalo. And with the horns, threw the cat into the air. Gored it. Gored it. But I don't know if the, uh, so the, the, so the victim the, was so too victimized, you know, to survive. So the water buffalo like that. that had fangs in his ass didn't like turn around and, and poke it? It was it was laying down. It, 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 it was it was losing the battle when these other two came to rescue it. So, like I say, I don't know if it would survive from the gouges. It's amazing how whatever it had how a, car a carnivorous creature that's outweighed by a substantial margin can bring down. Well, yeah, it's just it's like the lions when they go after a giraffe. Well, they do it as as team as a team. Yeah. Hyenas are are the most dreaded Those teams, that. predatory teams. They they and they're smart. They they systematically pick out the weak, the yeah. old, the vulnerable. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I know we di digress tremendously. Last one here for now. From the article, <coughs> the charity Oxfam International just reported at the World Economic Forum that by 2016 the world's richest 1% yeah. will own 48% of the world's worth. Well, that's what they want. That's what they want. That's what greed is all about. It never ends. And, and we're allowing it. The people are allowing it. At the same time Oxfam also reported that one in nine people in the world don't have enough to eat and more than one billion people live on less than one dollar and twenty-five cents a day. This is an outstanding reading of, uh, of, of high importance. And, 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 and you know why? You know who's partially to blame? You people out there with voter apathy that stood home this past November 4th, 2014. It, it is the people who don't give a shit and don't get involved that don't vote. I blame you. Shame on you. Continue. It, is it any wonder that there is so much fear, hate, hunger, mistrust, and strife in the world right now? How sad is it? In a world with so many riches, and resources provided to us by our Maker, that this inequality still exists. If only a small amount of the wealth and resources owned by the world's richest was used to assist others in need, there might be less turmoil in the world. Yeah. Well, people don't realize, we the people don't realize the power we really do have. Hey, one one uh, soldier ant in the Amazon jungle is nothing, but a whole colony, unstoppable. Just get out of their way. That's all I have to tell you. And I don't care how big you are, you know. And this is what people have to do in America: look to the soldier ant. Look to the soldier ant. According to uh, <clears throat> independent sources or whatever, we have enough food right now to feed 14 billion people. We only have seven. So of course that puts the Monsanto bullshit to rest. We're trying to feed the world so we have to GMO these crops. Lies. To make more. Lies. For and, people. And what about that, that, uh, that sell, hey, that sell out, that sell out little pussy wimp, Jamie Oliver, sir. Well, I was just gonna say, that's what uh, the lie that Jamie fell for. 
Oops, I'm not the, I'm not involved with no GMOs. You didn't deny it yet that I know of. He didn't deny it yet? Hell no. It's like Tom Brady saying, I don't know anything about any deflated football. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, I want to uh, say hello to uh, my uh, very long time uh, good friend, the one and only Iron Man Vinnie Blake. Iron Man Vinny Blake, I send my greetings. He is now trying to master the kettlebell and he's doing a great job. Iron Man Vinny Blake is a smart cookie. He bought an old house with a, a, a nice wood burning stove already broken in and he has been heating his home with wood that he has delivered. And uh, you gotta keep it dry, of course. But doing a great job. Where the hell do you keep it dry? Uh, you gotta have put it in some kind you of shed. It. You gotta have some kind of, you know. He's got a garage. That's I think he's a got. A, I think he might have a shed now. Well, well you have a big one. You gotta keep. The, of course, you gotta keep the firewood dry. Well, usually, if you look at old pictures of, of uh, places that used to be in this area, the, the wood was piled outside. At one time, uh, well, if wood rots, it can bring. bring in a cord of wood. If wood rots, it can bring termites. You got to worry about that too. But uh, you know, at one time, the kitchen stove was uh, was wood burning, and for cooking and for heating the home, we had coal. What do you mean? We had a coal burning stove the kitchen in stove? the kitchen, and a pot belly coal burning stove in. Now, the what did room. your mom use for cooking? Coal burn. Oh. So you had the, it's like a cast iron kitchen. Gigantic it's, stove. It's a yeah. big stove big that cook, you cooked on and it heated the home. Yeah. That's almost like living off the grid. Almost. Well, we were poor. But you had electricity. Yeah. No, of course we had electricity. Who doesn't have electricity today except in Haiti? I think. I think maybe even the Amish have electricity now, do they or no? Uh, they may, but I don't know. I don't know if they, you know. Yeah. Is it time for your lunch? Yes. Okay. Hey. It is time. It is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And we will be joined by our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, with promo and his words of wisdom. And then we'll be back for the balance of the show. Yeah. All right. And whatever you're eating, you're, it's very aromatic. It's chilly. Oh, you're having chili today. Yeah. With All right. Hi, I'm William Morrow. Wake up, people. Because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. For your words of wisdom and promo. 
and uh, you will also, I, 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 well, you have seen the very deep banners that I attached before and after William H. Morrow. I hope you enjoyed them and learned something from them, including the banner about the, uh, what was that, the eight? $8 billion uh, uh, in food stamp cuts, and then yet they turned around and gave $83 billion to the bank industry as subsidies, otherwise known as uh, the corporate welfare. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that, as long as the money's in politics, this is where we're at. Corruption. Bribery. Corruption. Bribery. Yes. What did somebody say on Facebook last night from another country? He said, in your country, you call them lobbyists. We call them corrupt. Well, yeah. They, they, they also, also, a subsidy <clears throat> is a bribe or a payback. A bribe. A payback. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody does you a favor and their payback in the United States they, they, they kindly call a subsidy. It's called welfare for the rich is what it really is. That's see, okay. see the biggest blood sucking parasitic moochers are not the poor in America. But do you know how many poor people in the middle class have bought into that line? Especially the idiots that live in the red states. Oh yeah, there was a family up there on Facebook where Yeah, did you see that? Yeah. you see that? Oh, family of po folk. Yeah, we vote Republican. They vote Republican. We're on social security disability, we're on this, that, and the other thing, matter of fact, my wife is pregnant, oh, come on. Oh my God. How much hypocritical can you get? How stupid can you get? Oh, it's no wonder we're the laughing stock of the world. You got idiots like that, yep. and them out living out yonder in them dar Bible Belt uh, uh, tea bagger red states, and then you have uh, idiots like Sarah Palin getting FaceTime. Uh, Michelle Bachman is not relevant anymore. No, uh, never relevant. No, none of them. None she of thought the, she was. None of the two are relevant. I mean, in reality. What's his name? Mike Huckabee? Yeah. Mike? Mike Huckabee is really an idiot like that, a nut like that doesn't stand a chance of getting elected, but he gets FaceTime. Uh, uh, right -wing, lost last time, too. Right-wing pastors like a John Hagee and other Ooh. nuts like him, they get FaceTime. Oh, yeah. Yep. They're not relevant, really, but they get FaceTime. Yeah. Now, um, before we say bye-bye, please explain what's going on between Fox News and Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura had a court case against Mr. Kyle, whose story is American Sniper. Mr. Kyle said, that at an or a function organization or bar, I think it was a bar, said that he punched Jesse. I think he blackened his eye or something like that. Ba, 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 ba. So Jesse sued him for defamation. Not for assault. Defamation of defamation character. Defamation of character. And he won. Right. $1.8 million. Now, people like Fox News and etc. are saying that Jesse uh, defamed Mr. Kyle. He saw an American in the movie, etc. That movie is great. Okay, and Jesse said that he, he caught Mr. Kyle in some lies, right? What do you mean, some lies? He lied. He said he punched Jesse out. Oh, that was the in lie. In a public place. Oh, that was the lie. Yes. 
N nothing about the movie itself. The movie was not made then. Oh, okay. As far as I know. Oh, that's what it was about. I oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh, I thought it may be... He was trying to make himself bigger than Jesse Ventura, a hero. I punched Jesse out, baby. In other words, it, it's like somebody seeing um, uh, Steven Seagal or Jean-Claude Van Damme in a restaurant okay. and somebody wants to look macho in front of his girlfriend so he picks a fight with them. Yeah. yeah. I understand now. Mm -hmm. Petty bullshit. Well, what the point is, the man was a liar. Jesse won $1.8 million for calling him a liar. I, I assume there for was, trying to defame him. I assume there were witnesses in the establishment. I don't know what the court case said. I don't know. It ended in uh, $1.8 million. That's all I know. Okay. So he won the case. The man was a liar. Okay, now I fully understand okay. what happened. I thought maybe there were some parts of the movie that were fabricated, but that, that, the wasn't the, that wasn't the case. Nothing with the movie. The movie makes him out to be a hero. That's what the movie does. Okay? Okay. But as I said at the beginning of the show, I don't think you're a hero. If you're up on top of a roof and you shoot somebody in the back as a sniper. You mean if you have a high-powered rifle? If you have, let's say, you have a Barrett 50 caliber sniper rifle with a scope and you're up on a roof somewhere and uh, you're saying, ah, should I engage? Should I pop this one or yes or no? Ah, right, I'll pop them. No, uh, he probably had to go ahead. He, he, he gets to go ahead from the United States government to pop them. That's not the point. You know, it's just like uh, it, it wasn't a hero, the CIA idiot who shot Martin Luther King. Was he a hero? The American media, U.S. media. How about the ones who shot JFK in the car? The, the the U.S. media never brought that to the public about the Martin Luther King's family winning. Well, they didn't win the suit at that time. Uh, uh, well, eventually they they did win. Was it, was it a civil suit? Yes, a civil case. But it took years. But that's the whole point. They they it took years that the, and they have proved that Martin Luther King was assassinated by the US government the United States government that's correct that never that was but we never, knew that but people knew that that was never announced in the no, US media of course. <laughs> they, they don't announce that stuff we, you know it's like when how much Gary no points up that uh, the f big farmer uh, the companies have been sued so many times over so many gall dang uh, medicines and etc you don't hear of it because they put the uh, gag orders on. Approved by the FDA. This drug was approved by the FDA originally. Then... <laughs> but I'm saying in the court cases, they, they, yeah. you, you were issued... Yeah, okay, we're going to pay you the money, but you have to sign this gag order. What about the so-called friendly fire of that the airline uh, that took off from... Uh, the, Air Asia. Uh, or the one in Ukraine. No, what about that, that plane uh, uh, that flew over Long Island? Uh, oh, yeah. Sog yeah, yeah, yeah. Sogarties, they called it, the area. Sog I remember that when I was uh, mm -hmm. watching Channel 2 at that night. It's not a whole thing. But that's what they say. They never proved that. It no, it was never it. proven, no. No, but um, they say that the United States brought down that one, the plane in the Ukraine. I don't know what the hell happened to Air Asia. And sacrifice all those people. All I know about the Air Asia. For what Asia, reason? The Air Asia one, the co pilot, the black boxes show that he was at the controls. And he went up too fast at too, too extreme an angle and it stalled. And then it came down. So. A jet stall is capable of stalling? Of Are you kidding me? Not not just a prop plane? No, no, no. Jets can stall. I heard jet, fu jet fuel is more or less kerosene. That's what it is. And I hear a uh, there's a new jet aircraft that sits, seats like one or two people that could fit in your driveway. 
Uh, you get a jet engine. It's, there's a car that can go. It's like the only this big. There's a car come becomes a plane. Yeah, might be the same one. The wings fold up. Yeah, that's the one. I hear the engine is small. And the uh, it's real a, small. a car that becomes a boat goes out there and into the ocean. Maybe it is a car. Hey, you got seat planes on you. Maybe there could, there could be a car, boat. It could be an amphibious vehicle that could fly. Yeah, you got the all-terrain vehicles that go. That could, the, the ducks have them. The duck dynasty. They have two of them. You go out in the water with them. Like an amphibious uh, vehicle. Is uh, and then uh, some of them. Uh, I don't know if this one can hover or not, but no. I hear it takes a lot of fuel to hover for a jet to hover. You know. But anyway, I digress. Uh, all right, so let's commence. <clears throat> Let us commence. The divergence within Islam began in the 18th century with the advent of Wahhabism named after Muhammad ibn Abin al-Wahhab, who believed that Muslims had strayed from the authentic teachings of Islam. Yeah. Well, you, you had explained to me many times that the third uh, caliph, Uthman, uh, 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 hid the original teachings of Muhammad. He didn't hide them. He destroyed them? He didn't destroy them. What did he do? He put out his own and destroyed all the other Qurans in existence. That's kind of what I just said, wasn't it? No, because you didn't put out that he put out a new version. Oh, like uh, kind of similar to the Republicans trying to rewrite the Bible today. That's correct. Oh. They put out a couple of versions. Right. Which alter very drastically the uh, King James version. So there's, the there's a similarity here. If, well, the similarity in any play, any government or something that censors, they put out their own. You know, the movement condemned visiting shrines and tombs of the saints. Muslims who did not agree with his teachings were excommunicated or killed. in an effort to purge Islam from what Al-Wahhab believed to be unsanctioned innovations. Wahhabi military campaigns waged war against moderate Muslims, demolishing Islamic shrines and slaughtering entire villages of Muslims who did not subscribe to the extremism. Yeah, and we're talking about religion, which has never been proven. This same extreme ideology is behind the present-day destruction of shrines and mosques and the continuing violence against minority and mainstream Muslims all over the world, such as Shiites in Pakistan. Wahhabism would have remained a footnote in history as a puritanical cult movement, even after it had, even after it was adopted as the official state religion, were it not for a single factor, mm. the discovery of oil, yeah. the flood of petrodollars meant the Saudis could then invest in institutions that create extreme and conservative religious leaders who in turn helped maintain the Saudi royal family's position of power. Although Wahhabism itself does not advocate violence, it does emphasize anti-Semitism and misogyny. It also bars interaction with non-Muslims except in cases of necessity. And the excommunication of any Muslims who do not subscribe 
to its deeply conservative and culturally isolated ideology. It thus lays the intellectual foundations for jihadism, a rogue offshoot of Wahhabism that encourages the terrorism we see on TV screens. Radicalization of Muslim youths can thus no longer be seen as an isolated, isolated domestic problem when it is funded by wealthy Wahhabis who are continuously supporting groups to further their ideology. Much like the GOP does, I mean the uh, corporations do to the GOP, to further their ideology. It is clear that Wahhabism is not Islam. It is a cult movement. Like the Christianity, uh, the right-wing Christianity of the United States that uses Islamic terminology and has hijacked the religion using petrodollars. In the process, its adherents are killing and maiming more Muslims than people of other faiths and are creating deep societal rifts and lasting enmities within their own community. emboldened by anarchy in failed and failing states, funded by federal dollars, justified by fundamentalist ideology, extremist groups such as Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State are seizing the moment and endeavoring to impose Wahhabi ideas wherever possible. The Saudi government still promotes Wahhabism at home and abroad. Scholar Sadiq Hamid of Liverpool University in England has estimated that the Saudi government spends two billion to three billion dollars a year spreading Wahhabism. That includes scholarships for non saudis to travel to Saudi Arabia and subsidize books and other educational materials. Some Western Muslim institutions have accepted Saudi funding. Although many poor Muslim communities around the world appreciate what they see as investment in education, it lays the foundations for extremism. Once young people have been taught to see mainstream Muslims as irredeemably other, once the seeds of misogyny and anti-Semitism have been planted, they are hard to uproot. The global propagation of a doctrine that has been apparent to jihadism impedes counter-terrorism efforts. Islam is at a point in history where a key American ally is spending money laying the foundations of an extreme interpretation. The result is more fertile ground for jihadist narratives. It is time we turned our attention to this issue. We are entitled to ask some tough questions of not just Saudi Arabia, but of our own government. Because we support them. Excellent, excellent deep reading. Well, we're not actually finished with this one. What?
can't hear you, man. We are not actually finished with this line. Islam is a religion of love. My brother was killed by terrorists, by false Muslims. These were the words of Malik Marabet, the brother of the policeman who was shot in the Charlie Hebdo attack. He's right. But his point raises another question that doesn't get the attention it deserves. How did Islam come to the point where charismatic firebrands like Jamal Bankhal, who radicalized two of the Paris terrorists, are seen as authoritative and venerable? Hey, how did Christianity become totally bonkers in the United States with the how right wing? The, how did the Roman Catholic Church become an exponent of Christianity? Yeah, with the Inquisition and uh, suppressing, um, oppressing science, preventing but people the, of science from doing it. The anything. church is based on the Babylonian mystery religion. Not Christianity. Magical mystery tool. Yeah. All religions have their extreme. Mystery tour. Self-described good pastor Terry Jones caused an international furor when he threatened to burn the Quran. The Ku Klux Klan has been parading nominally Christian symbols like Bibles and crosses for centuries. But these movements are seen for what they are. Cults. Yes. That appropriate the symbolism and style of a religion for their own amoral ends. Yeah, power and control is their objective. Yet, when a voice like Baghal or Anwar al Awaki, Awaki, Awaki before him, or Osama bin Laden. Before that, preach the message that Islam requires a murder. A straight reversal of the truth. Their message finds fertile ground. It is time for the debate. On recent events, the move from the relatively familiar ground of questions about freedom of speech and the importance of satire to thornier and less comfortable questions. How did Islam come to this point? How did Christianity come to this point in the U.S.? Same thing. Can we do anything about it? When non-Muslims write about these topics, they tend to stop at the border of these questions and for good reason. They stand on the threshold of the internal theological debate of a great world religion. To advance further means going into territory about which even commentators don't feel they can bluff their way through. It means engaging with 12 centuries worth of theological debate and risking offending millions with a slip of the pen. Safer to avoid the question altogether. Just as you don't have to be a Christian to have a working knowledge of the difference between Catholicism and Protestantism, you shouldn't have to be a Muslim to understand the difference between some of the radically different strands of which within this doing so is key to understanding how we got here. Most branches of Islam are quietist, pietistic, apolitical. These are the millions of Muslims for whom, like people of faith around the world, 
being religious means prayer, study, and self-reflection. Not converting by the sword. No, not converting by the sword. Uh, with an ideology that is not proven yet. No religion has been proven. So therefore, no religion should ever be involved with politics. Well, that's what they are. And they're not supposed to be in the United States. Nope. No. And Mr. Huckabee and his ilk. Nobody tells them to, to read their constitution and shut the hell up. Nobody challenges them. They say them. that the constitution is a Christian document. No, it's not. And we should honor it as No, it's not. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Prove oh, it. Oh, well, that they don't have. Prove it or shut up. Put up or shut up. Remember that old saying? Put up or shut up. Nobody is challenging these nuts coming because from the right wing. As the court case says, Fox News is allowed to lie. And why are they allowed to lie? Because we gave them that pride right to do that. Oh boy. Okay. I need a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> the writer goes on to blame the deaths of two police officers on a deranged man who should have been in treatment but then makes a convoluted case about the Second Amendment and the power of people owning guns. His point could have been better made by addressing the political correctness when it comes to helping and committing the mentally ill. This country has failed miserably in controlling the mentally unstable. Ronald Reagan let, let all the mental institutions uh Open the doors! Yeah, they, he, he, he put them out into the streets. All the patients from the mental institutions. Most of the gun murders are done by people who did not own the gun legally. See what I mean? I told you gun control won't work because they people who do bad things with guns get it through the black market or they take somebody else's gun. So it's more about controlling people than guns. And as far as the two deaths of New York City police officers are concerned, these brave men died because of the killer's hatred of police. However, and this is my aside, the head of the NRA, Mr. Lau Pierre, he says the only way to stop a bad man with a gun is a good man with a gun. Well, the two policemen had guns. What about the other two policemen up there in the donut shop in, uh, in the Northwest or whatever? Yeah. And they were shot. They had guns. They also said that uh, a bullet travels much faster than calling 911. <laughs> well, yeah. But the point is... Obviously, the answer to that question of a bad man with a gun is not a man, because there were two men with guns. Hey. What did he do? Sneak up behind the two of them, pop them both in the head before the other one could react? Hey. After the other one gets shot? Come on now. Didn't, didn't, they, didn't that happen in the wild, wild west? With, the, with, the, with, with gunfighters and, uh, and, and miners uh, that getting shot from in the back? or you And know. what was the answer? Wild Bill Hickok himself was shot in the back of the head by a coward. Yeah, but what was the answer? When you came into town... You gotta check your guns. ...wearing the gun, you gotta check the gun. That was Wyatt Earp, right? I Brother believe Earp. so. Wyatt Earp. Especially yeah. when you go into the saloon. Oh my god. Uh, oh yeah, well, according to the movies, they didn't just order a shot of whiskey. Leave the bottle. They took, they, they bought the whole bottle. As New York City and the nation continue to re mourn the assassination of two New York City police, 
We have heard all the accolades and all the vitriol, yet little about the gun used in the killings of the two officers. We know that the semi-automatic weapon was purchased from Arrowhead Pawn Shop in Georgia in 1996. Since the killer was a convicted felon, he would not have been able to legally purchase the gun for himself. As of this writing... For himself? But he could buy it for somebody else? And just decide to keep it? <laughs> Investigators are still trying to figure out how this gun ended up in his possession. All right. We know that 57% of guns originate from 1.2% of gun sellers. Common sense begs the question, if we know who they are, why are they allowed to remain in business? Yep. Perhaps the New York City police should turn their ire and their backs on the National Rifle Association, whose main objective is to ensure easy, secretive access to guns, large and small, regardless, while filling the coffers of gun manufacturers. Regardless who, who acquires the gun. Regardless who purchases the gun. They don't want you to know who did that. And perhaps they should the same toward the lawmakers who do the National Rifle Association's bidding. We don't know if more stringent federal gun laws would have prevented this latest tragedy, but clearly it wouldn't hurt to try. Yeah, man. Just like that, that person said from overseas, you call it lobbyists, we call it corruption. It's a yes. lobby, right? NRA is a lobby, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, well, um, we have time for a... Uh, we a have time for a change of pace. I think I know it's coming. It's not tomato. No, it's no, no, no. Not no. tomato paste. Tomato paste? Or toothpaste. Tom's no. of Maine toothpaste. It's, it's what I think it is. Where's Tom's of Maine? I don't got that. No, I, I think it's uh, a, um, a, a a deer, some somebody. Mm, uh, no. Uh, well, let em us Emily Dickinson. Dickinson. No. All right, go ahead. When I started bird watching 14 years ago, <whistles> I didn't know a coot <laughs> from a cormorant. There's certainly a lot of loons around, though. I, I had just moved into a house by the Celery Farm natural area in Allendale. That's in Pennsylvania, isn't it? Yeah. I, no, Allendale, New, Jer New Jersey. There's an Allendale, okay. Allendale, New Jersey. Right. I wonder what the salary of the celery farm workers, get it? Celery, salary. The oh. salary of the celery workers. Salary comes from the word salt, salt because wages used to be paid in salt. Salt was that precious back then? Absolutely. Well, the salt I use is certainly as precious to me, the Himalayan uh, pink salt, and I also use uh, a good sea salt. Yeah, yeah. And I began ambling around the 107 acre refuge to see what critters I could find. That is when I met a young hotshot birder named Rob Fanning and realized how skilled he was at locating and identifying all sorts of birds and how gracious he was at sharing that knowledge with a clueless greenhorn like me. Wouldn't it be funny if his last name was Beekman or, or Featherman or something? All right, continue. Fanning has nurtured dozens of other North Jersey birders <laughs> in the same way. 
not only to enjoy the quest to see new species but also to take the time to appreciate the beauty of birds we see every day oh birds are wonderful birds are great the closest uh modern relatives to the dinosaur uh, and they're, they're gorgeous well the, the males are these days when the waldwick native isn't at his job in franklin lakes he's either birding or leading walks for new jersey audubon at such local hot spots as the celery farm garrett mountain in woodland park or the court park in lindhurst Last year, Fanning reached a New Jersey milestone shared by a few others. He saw his 400th species in the Garden State. Not a bad feat, considering that only 300 are usually seen here. Equally impressive, as Bergen County life list is at 294. Yikes! I barely have that many in the United States. With 2015 recently upon us, I asked Fanning to share his thoughts on birding in the region and his advice for new birders. Since this column is the bird watcher, it only makes sense to interview one of the best around. Mm -hmm. Question. Just how good is the birding here in New Jersey? Well, the bird is the word. New Jersey is one of the best birding states because of its wide variety of habitats and its location along the Atlantic Flyway. That's true. Many different habitats in New Jersey. You got marshland, swampland, mountains, lakes, this, that, and the other thing. North Jersey in particular, in particular has a large amount of woodlands and mountains, making it especially great in spring and fall for warblers and other songbirds. I have them all in my yard. And I'm not in a rural area. I got cardinals. I have uh, uh, well, a lot of robins. You're so. supposed to keep a list of them. Robins, cardinals. You've seen 400 different species. Cardinals. Uh, uh, I, I saw the first blue jay this summer ever in my yard. Ah. First blue jay. No hummingbirds, though. Uh, they don't like our town here. Um, they probably get spooked, you know, it's uh, too congested. Uh, uh, mockingbirds, I see them all the time. Um, haven't seen sparrows in a long time. Haven't seen sparrows. We got hawks. Woo! We got yeah, hawks. It was, some, it was some black bird screaming out here this morning. Yeah, uh, of course crows. They come in the morning. Yeah, they always come in the morning and, they, and then they take off. You know, anyway. Garrett Mountain. Oh, wild uh, doves. Lots of them. Lots of them. Garrett Mountain is one of the best migration hotspots in on the East Coast. Well, Garrett Mountain is a lovely place to be. It's a, it's a beautiful park, too. Question. What's the best unsung burning spot in North Jersey? Pterodactyl. I vote for Halifax Road, Lake Henry in Mahwa. Oh, Mahwa is is a uh, Mahwa is mostly rural, but mountainous though. But they they do have suburbs there. At the foothills of the Rabbitholes. It's a huge town. It's huge. Question. Yeah. Do you have a favorite bird? Cardinal. But you know the robin, the robin redbreast with his big pecs, his big chest sticking out is is a very comical bird to watch. Especially when they're trying to play tug of war after a rain, trying to pull a tug damn war. worm out of the ground. I, it looked like a cartoon, I swear. I was laughing. It was like playing tug of war with this big worm. They know when to hunt them, too. The bobolink. They are survivors. Why is that? They are shot by hunters, and their grassland habitat 
is constantly being destroyed, yet they still persist in decent numbers. Um, well, they all named their children Robert, you know. And they all travel all the way from their northern United States breeding grounds to the Pampas of Argentina. That far, huh? And back. That far. It's incredible. Migration. Well, even the migration of the monarch butterfly to Mexico and, and to breed in. Or oh, that, that other bird, what is he on Easter Island or Madagascar or some place? And they fly way down out into the ocean. No place to rest. I know the uh, the monarch brother butterfly requires milkweed for some reason. They're in danger. The monarchs are in danger. But anyway. How about a nemesis bird? What's that? Bad bird. What? A bad bird. One you don't like. Nemesis. Your nemesis. Oh, it's called the nemesis bird. Yeah. No, he's calling. What kind of what bird? kind of bird do I hate? You don't like. I nemesis. like a, I like them all. I, honestly, I don't have a problem with any bird. Well, they, this gentleman does. The bird has the word, man. The bird has the word. He has a problem with Wilson's clover. This guy better get a girlfriend. I finally saw one this past summer at Stone Harbor. Chased and missed this one on three separate occasions. Question. What kind of winter birding do you do in North Jersey? I bird mostly the Meadowlands region. Bird between your legs? <laughs> Great for birds of prey and waterfowl. Oh yeah, there's us. We have ospreys, we have bald eagles in New Jersey. We have kinds of hawks and falcons. I think we might have golden eagles. I'm not sure. i got to double check on that. Farther afield, I go to Sandy Hook for ocean birds. Owls. Oh yeah, Ooh. ospreys. Ooh. Ooh. Sea hawks. Who? 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 Question. What is your advice for a new bird? Get a good pair of binoculars. Good one. Good, good answer. You know something? Uh, Jerry told me he's. Uh, I mean, he has all kinds of expensive astronomy equipment. But if he had to start all over again, he would get a very good pair of uh, binoculars with the panoramic capabilities because with a, with a telescope, in, in a lot of cases, you see a blurred heavenly body in the expansive telescope. Okay, it's not the Hubble. Or, you know, you're on you're on Earth. You got light pollution. You got the clouds. You got overcast. But with binoculars, you get more, actually, a good pair of binoculars, whether you are interested in astronomy or bird watching, it's good to have. Get a good pair. Don't get a cheap pair. Bird as often as you can. Both alone and with others. Learn and study.
study your region's expected birds and the timing of their migration and get a good field guide and optics. All this talk of birds is putting me in a mood for fried ch chicken, Popeye's fried chicken, or turkey soup. I use Koa 8 times 42 binoculars. They have a great feel and they don't break the bank. Shop online. Before you go to any store, go to Google Shop. shipping if you can. Question. What is your advice for backyard birds? Keep those feeders filled. Well, uh, yeah, make sure to squirt. A good sunflower in the shell, sunflower seeds, or, you know, I mean, cheap, the cheap sunflower seeds, you know, cardinals like that. Some of New Jersey's rarest birds have been found at bird feeders, especially in the winter. If I was a bird, I'd be by the bird feeder. For example, a female very thrush spent the winter of 2004 and 2005 at a feeder in Riverdale. Oh, wait a minute. Wasn't, wasn't there an article about Northern Bergen County elderly couple that got in trouble. Chickens. Chickens. What well, had nothing to do with the bird feeder? Lift on. Yeah, the one with the bird, the peanuts in the bird feeder. Yeah. The reef bird feeder with the peanuts. Right, right, right. And okay. they think they have suet, some kind of fat holds the nuts. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. The guy in, I know the guy with the chickens in Clifton. Uh -huh. I know him. Okay. He's uh, his uh, the law was grandfathered over because he. Uh, He's done, and the picture is of a bobble link. <laughs> bobble link. Well, I know, I know, um, on the cover Bob, formerly known as Mass Bob, or Bar Brother Bob. Brother Bob, rather. <laughs> yeah, I know him. He's he works with uh, the evangelist Ken Create. Uh, he and a Bob Link. I don't know if you could see it. Not that it's important. Back up. But this uh, guy uh, needs uh, to uh, find uh, He needs to find himself a chick, man. He needs to find himself a woman. <gasps> this guy is. Uh, he's got. A uh, he's got nemesis birds, favorite birds, the bobolink. Well, he's a bird. The bird. He's a birder. He's a birder. Yeah. All right. You know what? The bird is the word. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. Bird, 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 bird. Bird is the word. My mom, my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom. Okay. That's it. That's it. We're done. Done. We're done for this week's. Done. So. Uh, uncensored heart. Hard-hitting truth. Thank God, most of the readings were hard-hitting. Okay, so we ended off with this story about birds. It's for the birds. What can I tell you? It's for the birds, and, and it's a no-brainer. If you're a bird, the bird brain. Hang out 
buy a good bird feeder that's kept for. Ah, if, yeah. If, if, you know, birds are not stupid. You know, the term bird brain is really not fair because a lot of birds are, are very intelligent. They say that ravens, which I guess are in the crow family, are the, the most intelligent bird on the planet. Did you happen to see that uh, video a couple of days ago, a few days ago, on Facebook? It probably took place in India or wherever it, uh, wherever they had the monkeys running around. Yeah. And it was at a train station. Yeah. And obviously, a monkey got hit by a train. And it was either in shock or knocked out or whatever. And there were two other monkeys there. And the one monkey was trying to bring the other monkey around. He was doing all, all kinds of things to the monkeys to bring them around. Are, yeah. yeah, and dump them in the water and everything. Really? Yeah. And the monkey did come around finally. Well, monkeys are primates. They're not stupid animals. Yeah, but if you got hit by a train, you know, I thought maybe it was more damage yeah. than that. Well, monkeys, uh, uh, maybe the flexibility of the monkey saved them. I don't know, but if you look, his arms and legs. Dirty for you know. Monkeys. What his friend was good for monkeys in India. They they, uh, they hang out very close to uh, populated areas. They, yeah, they walk right through. They beg, you know. They they panhandle. Seriously, they they steal what they can. They mooch. Uh, Republicans wouldn't like them very much. No, they don't. Monkeys. Hey, a Republican told me in, in the Florida Keys, see those pelicans that come by the marina every day? They're looking for a handout. They're looking for handouts. Yeah, a Republican and a, and a born-again, holy roller Christian. It's funny how the pattern works out. So funny that, that if you read the Bible, the Leviticus and Numbers, you find out that when uh, uh, the Lord brought <coughs> it, the Israelites into Canaan, the land of Canaan, they divided it up amongst themselves. Nobody paid for it. Nobody bought the land. Right. So isn't that a handout? Yes. How about in the United States of America? Back in the 1800s. When the United States of America gave away land in the West. As long as you went on it and farmed it for five years. Or how about when the United States gave out land? And out. And out. And what about what about corporate subsidies today? And, and outs. Out. Yeah. But all of that is okay. But God forbid you help a poor man across the street. And and a bowl of soup. and the soul and the social service. subsidies and a bloated military budget. You know, I just, I read before that $8 billion of food stamps cut, $83 billion in bank industry subsidies, you know, to recap the beginning of the show. It's absurd. It's petty. It's, 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 it's 
cold hearted. It's, it's uh, crazy. It's a uh, mean spirited. It's crazy. Yes. It's See. hypocritical, most of all. It's hypocritical. Thank you for joining us for this week's uncensored, hard hitting truth. And don't be hypocritical. Don't be hypocritical and, and um, uh, you know. I mean, once in a while, I go outside to, you know, get a whiff of fresh, pure air. It's frozen air, you know. Um, but uh, the guy, the guy in my neighborhood has a big fireplace, and I love that aroma. I lo love that that beautiful rustic smell of burning wood. Actually, that's kind of what I smell when I go get the smoke kielbasa at the Polish uh, pork store. You know, but anyway, say goodbye to these jabronis. So long, the smoke the burjoni. Smoke burjoni. <laughs> you get me hungry, man. Yeah, get me hungry. This has been a Mega Live 21 production.